Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess, and today let's go over the Azure AI 900 certification. And let's start with this image here. This is a generated image from AI. And think about how this image was generated, right? It was generated by using some text, right? I didn't upload an image, but I, I gave it some text. I said the words like plants, sunset, office background, and then I made it blurry, told the AI some key words and I allowed it to generate using generative AI, allowed it to generate images based off of my text. So you can do it the other way too, of course, right? So you can have an, an image and have it generate text based off your image. So kind of think about that and then think about how embeddings work. So when you go into ChatGPT or another AI model, you have embeddings and these are 3D representations of words, like imagine a cube, uh, a cube of space, and words are kind of grouped together that are close, like Paris and France might be close together, dog and cat might, might be close together, but the word skateboard is kind of far, but maybe not too far, right? But maybe skateboard and palace may be pretty far away. So think about that 3D representation of words, and that's how it guesses or makes predictions on how to create the image like you see here. So I'm not gonna go into specific questions, but we are going to study and kind of go over sections that you can learn on for the Azure AI 900 certification. One of the most important things to learn for the exam is to figure out the guiding principles that Microsoft has. So it's fairness, reliability and safety, privacy and security, inclusiveness, transparency, and accountability. Now you may think, okay, this stuff is very easy, I understand, but Microsoft is gonna throw a couple curveballs at you. The exam is gonna ask you questions like, if you were handling a bunch of missing values, which of these guiding principles should you follow? And so most likely the answer is going to be reliability and safety. You have a reliable, AI tool, so that would fall into that uh, category. They may even ask you questions about, let's say there are people that are hearing impaired and they can't hear, you know, which principle does that include? And so that's gonna be your inclusiveness, right? Empowering your AI tool for everyone. So if you have personal data and you only want to view personal data, what guiding principle does that follow? So that is going to be that's going to be for privacy and security. You know, you only you can see your personal data. You don't want other people to see it. So I would really study each one of these and you can click learn more here. I'll put the link in the description of the video and I would go through each of these guiding principles much closer. They're going to ask you questions about this and they're going to throw a couple curveballs in there. I would say this is a, a fairly large chunk of the exam. Now, if you've never had an Azure subscription, I would recommend spinning up an Azure subscription. You can, for the first time, you get $200. You gotta be very careful when you do this. Make sure to set up alerts on your billing. Make sure you watch you know, your, your cost. And if you're just learning, I would say probably delete your services as you go. If you're using it and studying for the day, after you're done studying, delete all your services. So once we go through the Azure services, you can see we can go to all services here. And we really want to focus on this area right here, the Azure Machine Learning. So this area right here, let me zoom in some more. You want to focus on Azure AI services, which was cognitive services before. They just gave it a rename. So that, that does come with some free training, classify images, anomaly detectors. So this is another form of machine learning. It's very important for the exam. You need to go through each one of these face APIs speech services, Azure machine learning, custom vision. You need to know the difference between vision and custom vision. Make sure you study that. So you have computer vision here and you have custom vision. Make sure to understand the differences. There are gonna be questions on the differences between the two. Then you have document intelligences. Language, language is actually NLP, natural language processing. So understand language on the AI services. Maybe, actually there may be some bot questions on there, but you don't need to go through any of the coding or understanding how to code yet in these um, questions. So these are the important ones. Check out Azure AI services. 
When you uh, get in here closer, you can see Document Intelligence, Anomaly Translator, um, Q&A Maker. So this is the classic name. This is very important. Uh, questions uh, like the Q&A Maker are actually on here. Q&A Maker did get renamed. I believe it got renamed to Custom Question Answering. So this is like you upload a fact document and then you can ask questions based on your, your document and return answers. AI or machine learning. And you just need to know a broad generalization of what they are and how they work. So you need to understand the different types of machine learning. You have regression, classification, and clustering. And classification is actually split up between two types of classification. That's binary and multi-class. So when you think binary, I think true or false, yes or no. Multi-class is you have a, a set of choices that you can classify things as. Think of maybe something like flowers, you know, you have dandelions, daisies, and roses. And so you classify the machine to set those flowers in one of those exact classes. Next is gonna be clustering. Clustering normally has to do with any time they use the word group. So we wanna put them in groups, but we're not identifying the groups exactly like they did, we did on the multi-class classification. Like we just kind of group them in different groups that, that relate. And then finally is regression. Regression to me is more about predicting. So if we, we scroll down right here, the number of ice cream sold on a given day. So we're trying to predict, you know, based on how many um, ice creams we will sell based on temperature, rainfall, and wind speed, which obviously rain may affect the sales of ice cream. And let's go through the other ones after I kind of just gave you a brief overview binary classification. To me, this is true, false. So whether a patient is a risk for diabetes, true or false. Multi-class classification, they'd use the species of penguin, right? So they have three different species of penguin based on the image, I guess, is one way you could do it. You could say, which species does the penguin uh, belong to? You need to understand the difference between unsupervised machine learning and supervised machine learning. So unsupervised machine learning involves training models using data that consist only of feature values. So we'll get into more about features and labels in just a minute. But you need, just remember, you need to understand supervised and unsupervised machine learning. And finally, as I was speaking about clustering before, so usually when you see that word group, that means clustering. You're grouping similar flowers based on their size, based on the number of leaves, and number of petals. They're not identified as all dandelions. They're not identified as all roses, but you're grouping them based on their size and the number of leaves they have. So you need to be very careful with each of these types of machine learning and go through each one. On a deeper dive of each one of the machine learnings, you need to understand how they can be evaluated. So if we go into regression eva uh, evaluation metrics, you can learn that it could be decided by a mean absolute error, mean squared error, root mean squared error, and coefficient determination. Now you don't have to know exactly how each one of these works right now, but you just need to understand the basic fundamentals of it. Like, so you see you have a regression line. That's what regression is about, is how close it is based on the difference between the predicted and actual values. You can ca calculate them based on some common metrics. So just know how regression works and, and kind of study up on that area. When you do binary classification, make sure you understand this chart. True negatives, false positives, false negatives, true positives. Study this chart. Understand that this how this chart is. There are also other ways to evaluate uh, the binary metrics. And you have, let's see, the F1 score, the area under the curve. So pay attention to these, the precision. The, all of these are very important. Understanding how you evaluate each of the classifications is, is pretty important. And what's the difference between a feature and a label? You really need to study this. The difference between a feature and a label. This is basic machine learning. What they are, input data used to train the model. Labels, the output data the model aims to predict, right? So a label is what you're trying to predict how many sales you will have of the ice cream. The input data will then be, okay, the temperature, 
Is it raining outside? These are your features. And so I gave you the example of ice cream, but look at the example ChatGPT says here. Predicting house prices. The feature is the number of bedrooms, square footage, and locations. These are things that, that change the price. And the label is the actual price. All right, so next up is the difference with feature engineering, feature selection, feature deployment. Then you have model evaluation, model training. And so pay attention to these words, feature engineering. Engineering means what? To make. So making is feature engineering. So you make a feature. Think about this, feature selection. So this is picking, identifying, selecting, right? It's in, it's in the definition. Feature selection is to identify the most important features in a data set. Then deployment, right? So the process of the chosen features into a production environment. So this is deploying the features there. Ensure that the model receives correct input in real world application. Then you have model evaluation. So you gotta understand that the process of machine learning, right? The accuracy, the precision, and then you have model training. All right, so these were my exact notes. And if you can't read my handwriting, I'll walk through it. So feature engineering, create, create new features from raw data to, perform, um, to improve performance of machine learning. Feature selection, this is where you identify, you pick. Model deployment, making a trained learning model available. So model evaluation, this is examine. This is assessing the performance. Model training, teaching a model. So this is where you train it and you teach a model what you want to, to learn on. Also, make sure that you study on pipelines and Azure machine learning. So Azure machine learning, make sure you understand how pipelines work and look. So how it follows kind of like a Power Automate workflow. Um, some of the things that it could do is maybe split the data. Why should you split the data? So you also need to understand the inputs and outputs of a pipeline. Just think broader questions, right? So the jobs are through a REST API. You would use a, a key, right? So another thing is that you need a key. So you need a key in order to do an Azure pipeline. So there's two things you need. You need the REST API and a key. So when you're in pipelines, which things can you drag and drop, right? So you can drag and drop a data set. You can drag and drop a module. So you need to pay attention to that. They're gonna ask you very broad questions about doing this in Azure Machine Learning Designer. Maybe uh, set up a, a free instance and kind of play around with it. See what you can do there. When you use machine learning, it's very important to use separate data, right? So that's a very important concept that you need to know. When you test, this is another set of data. When you validate, it's another set of data used to tune the models. Make sure to use different sets of data. And this may be one reason you split your data in half. It gives it, you know, you could take one set of data you can train and the other set to validate. So remember that when you're building your pipelines. When you use Azure AI Vision Services, notice here, you have OCR. You can extract text from images, but generate captions and descriptions of images, detect thousands of objects in images, tagging visual features in images. So you can see right here, here's the OCR tool. So in the image, you can extract the data. Kind of understand how this works. You, you can describe an image. I think this is very common right now in the AI world is describing an image or what a lot of people are doing is they're giving a description of an image to generate an image. Uh, you can detect common objects. Notice the bounding boxes and how they are, right? Notice how it gives bounding boxes. You can tag visual features based on the embeddings of the image you can see you know sport person footwear it's 98 percent likely to have that word in the visual features of the tag of the image uh, image classification once again so we have apples bananas and oranges notice that classification word is coming in here right we have three different groups is it an apple a banana or an orange and you can see here the bounding boxes again object detection of the bounding boxes also remember, there's a whole different Azure service that detects faces, face analysis on Azure. So there's a face service, Azure face service, that can return the rectangle coordinates for human faces, right? So this is gonna be how you can detect faces, you know, get features, glasses, head pose, mask, etc. There's gonna be questions like, what can make the Azure face image not come in clear. And one of the main things is 
very sharp angles of faces, right? So glasses is not going to be a problem for detecting face, but it's sharp um, angles in an image. Let's see if we can find that exact wording. So right here, other issues, face detection can be impaired by extreme face angles, extreme lighting, and occlusion. Objects blocking the face, such as a hand. Glasses were okay. It did detect the glasses. Um, it can detect whether a person is wearing glasses or not, the head pose. But just think about, you know, for more accurate results in the face image, you know, one of the big things is extreme face angles. So when we talk about how to deploy these models, notice here container deployment. To use a container, you pull the container from the registry and deploy it. So remember, a Docker server, a container instance, but most importantly, AKS, Azure Kubernetes Service Cluster. So this is understanding containers and how you deploy your services. So you need to do a little bit of studying here. There's a few questions, not many, but make sure you understand how containers are. I would also broadly just kind of understand the difference between deep learning and machine learning. So here, deep learning is a subset of machine learning based on neural networks that permit a machine to train itself to perform a task. So notice deep learning is a subset of machine learning. So machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence, AI, that includes techniques that machines to improve tasks. So then AI is pretty much how we mimic the brain, right? It's human t intelligence, to mimic human intelligence. So deep learning, subset of machine learning, machine learning, subset of artificial intelligence. We have about two more main things that are uh, topics of the exam currently that I saw, and that's Azure AI search. So you need to pay attention to Azure AI search, you know, full text search and analysis. You need to understand how you can use a natural language to search different topics. You have NER, which is named entity recognition. This to me is very similar to synonyms also. It's a key task in natural language processing. So it identifies entities like names, dates, location, and text and classifies them into categories. And then you can see how it works. So this is just straight out of ChatGPT. I'm using generative AI to study AI. I, I totally recommend it. And so the input text, you can see that John Smith goes in and the tokenization and the entity recognition. Look at how it recognizes the names and then categorizes it, right? So John Smith, person. New York, location, date, location, date. That's what NER is, named entity recognition. Currently, right now, Azure AI supports two of the most common languages in Azure AI. That's Python and R. Remember that. They're going to ask you questions about, you know, which languages can you use? Python and R. Language Understanding Intelligence Services. So the exam is going to change, right? The exam is almost never the same. They, they do take like pools of questions and they take them from the history, but AI is changing so fast. So we just have to think about utterances, our examples, their phrases or sentences that people might use, and they help train the Lewis model. I would like to build a table for two. You know, if you're building a uh, chatbot, it's, it's kind of works in the natural language processing so it can understand what an utterance is. And then finally, the language understanding intelligence service. Uh, this was another question that was on there. You know, intents. You need to understand what intents are. Entities and utterance. You need to figure out the three differences between those two. All right, so I hope this was helpful. I'm sorry I'm not going to go through specific questions. I don't think Microsoft would even allow me to go through specific questions. If you want to go through specific questions, you can try some of the practice tests that are online. But I kind of just wanted to give you more of a, a quick study guide, you know. Did you hit all of the major topics? And maybe this will help you pass your AI 900 exam. I would say it's it's one that you should take. It's, it's pretty on the, the easy side. I think if you're learning Azure AI, it's, it's very important and it'd be a nice one to take. My name is Andrew Hess. I'll see you next time. Thank you.